Hello, and welcome to Continuing Clockwise, a channel about games, gamers, and gaming. I'm Chad. This video is specifically designed to help people with little time and little to no experience with Dungeons & Dragons prepare a character for your first game. I will assume that you know a little bit about what Dungeons & Dragons is, um, probably because your friends explained it, or maybe you watched some actual play videos on YouTube or something along those lines. But you're not necessarily familiar with all the details and all the rules. We're not going to cover everything today, but I am going to make sure that you are armed and ready to show up with your own character for your very first game. At every point, I'll explain what the simplest thing is to do. The key here is that we'll be following the path of least resistance. This video is for people who are really busy, don't have a lot of time or energy to invest uh, in this character creation process just yet. At the same time, you'll need to understand a few things as you go along. D&D has been enjoyed by gamers for over 30 years, and part of its longevity um, can be attributed to the many options available for designing characters. While this can be a great feature for people like me who really enjoy spending hours fidgeting with all the little details, it can really seem uh, like a barrier to entry and daunting to new players. The good news is that Wizards of the Coast has provided paths for making character creation quick and easy. Unfortunately, sometimes those paths are a little hard to find. They're spread out throughout um, the rule set. So what we'll be doing is finding those. I'll be pointing out the information for you as we go. And now I'm going to uh, remove my picture from the video so you have the full screen uh, as we go to, so you can follow along. The first thing you need uh, is somewhere to record your character information. This is called a character sheet. And this is the one that I like best. You can use just a blank piece of paper. That's fine. There are a lot of options made available by both Wizards of the Coast um, on their site and the fan community. This can be digital, it can be uh, analog, like I said. For this video, I'm gonna use a form fillable version just for demonstration. To be honest, when I'm, when I'm creating a character of my own, I prefer a paper, uh, paper and pencil. The thing about this sheet to pay attention to is this is, I think, called the alternate uh, character sheet. And the main difference is that the skills are broken up by with the ability score that they are associated with. Um, there's also another, I think the default character sheet has all the skills just in alphabetical order. So I prefer them um, associated with the ability scores. Um, and so that's what we're going to use today. You also need a rule set. You can buy your own player's handbook, but again, this video is for people um, who need help kind of onboarding uh, from ground zero. So I'm going to use the freely available basic rules. So here's what those look like. And these are available um, on the D&D site. You'll see the player's basic rules, and it's version 0 0.2. They came out with a um, 0 0.1 um, initially, and then I think a few weeks or a month later, they made some, some really minor revisions. So that's what we'll be, we'll be using today for the demonstration. And this is plenty. You know, frankly, the game is designed that you can play it with only this set of rules. You can play your whole... Um, you can have your whole D&D life, and, and that's fine. The Player's Handbook provides more options, more spells, more things you can do. So you'll need a pencil of your own, especially if you are filling this out by hand, like I recommend. And eventually, you're going to need some hobby dice, some, some of those funny-looking uh, Dungeons & Dragons dice. The process we're going to follow won't require you to make any rolls uh, today. So you can choose. There are some places where you can roll if you'd like to, but it's not required. At the end of the video, I will point out which dice you will definitely need access to, either to borrow or buy, um, to play the character that we're going to create. So let's get started. The first thing is we're going to start with the basic rules here on page six. Um, and so, yeah, you can read these first five pages, but again, we are trying to do the short version, the quick version of um, character creation. So page six is where you have the checklist. So we're essentially going to follow these, these rules right here as listed. But before we even start that, and this is something they advise you to do too, I want you to imagine the kind of character that you want to create. Before you get attached to any of these concepts, remember that the more complicated it is, the more rules you'll have to learn and the more decisions you have to make, both along the way and while you're playing. That can be part of the fun, uh, but for the most part, uh, we're going to start simple today. In D&D, &D, simple means creating a human fighter. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be boring. There are a lot of interesting human fighters to draw inspiration from. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, think about all the human fighters there, from Brienne to the Hound, who are really strong, to Jamie Lannister and Bronn and Jon Snow. All, I think, could be considered human fighters. Or you could make a human fighter that would resemble any of those. And those are all very different characters with different strengths and sets of skills and abilities. So for now, just like it says here, um, 
on page six of the basic rules, choose a race. Go ahead and go to your character sheet. I'll do that now with you as we go. And right up here, you'll see the word race. So just write human. That was easy enough. And now we're going to turn to page 17. You're probably wondering, well, now that I'm a human, what does that mean? So here it is, page 17. And you can read this. Most of this initial stuff is just flavor. So I'm not going to, you don't need to read that now. Um, I think you all know what humans look like. A human in Dungeons and Dragons is very similar to human in the real world. So don't worry about reading every, every word there. We can skip all the way down to 19. 19, page 19 is where the, the kind of mechanical stuff that we need to really pay attention to is. One thing that we're going to ignore this time, because this is for more advanced players or people who just want a little more time, is anything that says variant. We're not doing variants today. Um, we're keeping it easy. So here you'll notice these human traits. These are the important things. Just so we remember, if you're using, uh, if you're using pen and paper, you'll see the first human trait is this ability score increase. Your ability scores each increase by one. So later in the process, when we're doing our ability scores, all of these here on the left of your character sheet will be increased by one. So if, um, so I actually recommend that you write that, you jot that down over here on the left of each one, a plus one here, plus one here, plus one here. Um, I don't have an easy way to do that with this, you know, this free PDF viewer, but um, we'll remember that as we go. But again, it's just nice to kind of write these things out so that we can remember. Now we're also going to write as you, let's see, we'll click back over here. Age, you know, this is, you know, humans age just like humans do. So don't worry about that alignment. We don't need to worry about that today. Uh, D&D has a specific alignment system, uh, system, excuse me, which can be fun and useful, but doesn't really directly impact the game that much, especially the kind of combat -y parts. And the important thing is that you understand how your character will behave. Similarly, you can write a height and weight if you'd like, but uh, the important things for humans is just that you're medium sized. So most, most player characters like we're creating today are medium sized. Havelings and gnomes, you know, havelings are based on the hobbits from J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, do happen to be small, and then some creatures like ogres or something, which are not playable, are large. The important thing here is the speed. So the base walking speed is 30 feet. So let's go back to our character sheet and see where it says speed. We're going to write 30 feet. That's pretty common uh, for most medium-sized creatures. Um, that can change based on other things, but that's a very typical initial speed. And so the next thing that it said here is your languages. So you can speak, read, and write common, and one extra language of our choice. So let's go ahead and write common down. Um, everybody starts with common. That is not particularly interesting. So we'll just go ahead and jot that down for now. I'm going to hold off on that other language that the human knows. Um, it's not that important for starting, to be honest, and your DM may have opinions about that. So let's just roll along to some more of the fun stuff. So we got through, that was the first step. So let's go back to uh, page six. So we're gonna do a lot of toggling, which is part of the challenge. So page six is the steps for creating the character. So that was our race. Now choose a class. So a class is really what your current occupation and your job is. So when I said fighter, that's, that's what we'll be doing. So go ahead and write that on your character sheet as well. So that goes at the top, you probably saw it, at, for class and level. So we're fighter. And one, we're starting with a first level fighter. Uh, later on, uh, as we get more experienced, as this character gets more experienced, this number will go up um, as you increase in levels. And uh, you can pick up other levels. You can do other jobs if you'd like, but that's more, again, for advanced players. So we're not gonna fool with that today. Now, as a fighter, you get certain class traits. So let's go take a look at, at what it means to be a fighter. So that starts on page 24 creating a fighter. So this gives you, you know, again, this beginning is just to give you some idea about what it is to be a fighter. So you can read through that if you'd like. Um, I do want to really call your attention to you. So you can skip most of this stuff for now if you'd like, but pay attention to this quick build section. So this is what I was saying, where, where Wizards of the Coast, when they created this, know that some people won't have a lot of time. So this is what we want to pay attention to. So let's, let's just read that. So um, we're going to make strength or dexterity our highest ability score when that time comes, uh, which will be, will be fairly soon. And then uh, dip, we'll think about whether we want to focus on melee, you know, up close weapons or archery. Uh, or finesse weapons. Finesse weapons are just light, light blades or um, other kinds of weapons that are that you're handling more dexterity based. And then your next highest score after the strength or dexterity will be constitution. 
and that will give us more hit points, which really just means we can we can absorb more we can absorb more damage before we are killed. And then second, we'll choose the soldier background. So just so you know, that's something to refer to if you're trying to do it like we are. So the path of least resistance character creation. So think about, you know, again, about the kind of character that you want to create. And, you know, I just really think about the difference between, say, the Hound in Game of Thrones. And I apologize if you haven't read um, those books. But, you know, the Hound, who's very strong, clearly a strength-based fighter, or Bronn. And Bronn is very much a dexterity-based fighter. So those are kind of the, the senses. You know, is this somebody who runs around a lot and is really agile and wears lighter armor? Or is this someone who wears real heavy armor and um, can take a lot of damage and, and uh, deal a lot of damage as well? So now going to class features, we'll be spending some time here. So you'll see that the hit dice are uh, 1d10 per fighter level. We're one, we are at first level. Our hit points at first level are going to be 10 hit points plus our constitution modifier. And we don't know what that is yet. So um, we'll be referring back to that. And then when we gain levels, that tells us a little bit more about that. We don't have to sweat that at the moment. Uh, let's jot down the hit dice. So the box for hit dice are right here. And so we're just going to write one hit dice because we're first level and then D10 because we are fighters. So there are, will be conditions uh, during the game where you can roll that dice to recover some of your hit points. And then we want to write, and I might cheat a little bit um, with the copy and paste, but um, these proficiencies need to be transcribed into your um, other proficiencies uh, and languages box. So you need that information here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see if I can make this work the easy way. That would sure be nice. And, and really, you just have to do these first things. So your tools, your weapons, and your armor. Those are That's really what I'm talking about, these proficiencies. Saving throws and skills are recorded um, up here, up in this, this section next to your ability scores. So let's see if that works. It did. Great. So... Um, this will just remind us later on when we're picking our equipment and things that we can use. These, this is what we can use, and that's really good. So fighters, well, the tools obviously isn't, but pretty much all weapons and armor fighters can use. There might be some weirdo exceptions, but that's the, the general rule of thumb. Okay, great. So now, oh, actually, I want to transcribe that too. So our saving throws, we got strength and constitution. So we're what we're just going to do here, so it's strength. See where this says strength? And then saving throw. So we're just going to put a little, we're just going to mark right there. And, you know, just fill that little box in if you're doing this on paper. So strength and constitution. Um, so that'll that'll help us later on. Okay. And we're going to pause and not actually choose these skills just yet. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, pause in this and we're going to move forward into the next step of character generation. So again, that was back on page six. Um, and actually, I think that's page seven. Yeah, page seven is the... Is where we are here. So, so here looking at, we need to determine our ability scores. And so just as a really quick reminder, strength is just your physical, refers to your physical prowess. In this game, dexterity refers to both your bodily dexterity, you know, how good you can move your entire body, like a gymnast, for example, has high dexterity with all the flips and all that stuff, as well as fine motor skills. So a thief, for example, when they're picking locks, um, are um, illustrating their uh, high dexterity. Constitution is your physical health, uh, directly affects the number of hit points you have. And as an aside, hit points refer to how much damage you can take before uh, falling unconscious or dying. Intelligence is an indication of how much knowledge your character possesses. And wisdom measures your common sense. This is important in this game because two of the really highly used skills, perception and insight, are connected to wisdom. Charisma refers generally to your social force of will. So it combines likability with persuasiveness and attractiveness. Now think back about the image you had for your character. Our goal uh, in this process is to make our character as much like that as we can, given the constraints of the game. Now try not to be too disappointed if you can't quite make this character match your imagined version. Remember that we're creating a character who is new. There's uh, an internal balance to the game that didn't constrain some of the fantasy writers who created some of our favorite characters. You know, thinking about Robert E. Howard, for example, Conan the Barbarian wasn't constrained by this character generation process. There are a few different ways to assign your ability scores, but the simplest and easiest, and again, that's what we're focusing on, is called the standard array. So ignore all this stuff. We are not going to do this rolling, though that can be fun. Today, we're just going to do the standard array. So we're going to take these numbers that I'm highlighting, and we're going to assign those 
to our different ability scores. So we're going to assign so it's 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. Because we're human, all of these will also get an additional bonus a little bit later on once we, once we get going here. Following the advice from the fighter section, uh, remember I'll show you, let's go back to that. So that was 24, right? About the quick build, this will this will help us guide how we want to do it. I'm going to stick to the really iconic fighter type for this character. So I'm going to make strength our, my highest score. So I'm just going to do the array first, and then I'll um, then I'll add the modifiers later, just to keep things simple. So as recommended, I'm going to do a, my 15 for strength, and then constitution I will do 14, so I have good survivability and hit points. And then I you know I like to play characters who have a lot of charm, and I like to interact with the non-player characters uh, quite a lot. So I'm going to make charisma my next my next highest at a 13. And then my dex, dexterity, will be 12. I don't want him to be a bumbling, bumbling oaf. And then wisdom, I'm going to set at 10. And that leaves intelligence at uh, 8. So pretty, pretty iconic, even stereotypical fighter, you know, at, at the creation here is what I chose to do this time. Again, later on, you know, this there will still be a lot of opportunity to refine this character, but this is just the starting point. So now I'm going to go back and apply those bonuses based on the, the fact that we're human. So all of these will go up one. So 16 strength, and then a 13 dexterity, and then a 15 constitution, a 9 intelligence, and then the 11 for wisdom, and a 14 charisma. Okay, easy as that, right? The next step of this process is to use this really handy chart. And this, this chart is a friend of yours. Let's see if I can find it easily. So here, excuse me, right there. So this chart that says ability scores and modifiers will tell you what that means. So the score is the number that we just assigned. And the modifier tells you how, what you will most often apply it towards. What, you know, how it converts into a number that you will apply while you're playing the game. So we're going to go ahead and write those in now. So there will be some toggling back and forth and that's, that's just fine. So 16 strength. So now we look up the 16 strength gives me a plus three modifier. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in here, plus three. And then we're just going to go right down the list. So dexterity was 13. So that's a plus one. And then constitution at 15 is a plus two. Intelligence at a nine is minus one. So that's not great. And then wisdom at 11, I think is nothing. Yep, nothing. And then charisma, and I guess you guys are probably remembering better than I am. So 14, it's a plus two. Okay, great. So actually, I like to fill in everything. I'm a little compulsive that way, just like when you're doing an application so that you know uh, that you didn't skip it accidentally. It's like, no, I know it's a zero at wisdom. So, so those are the modifiers. And you might see other people these days will, will use the big box for the modifier because the modifier is what you use most often. So this is one of my little, you know, old time gamery tendencies, which is to have the ability score in the, the larger box. So, you know, just know that the larger number that's often in the teens um, is your ability score. And then the smaller number, it's usually anywhere between minus one and plus three, plus four, is your modifier. So that's a that's a key, that's a key difference. Now uh, that we've got our constitution modifier, you know, at plus two, we can use that to determine what our max hit points are. So as a fighter, um, as you may remember, we get to add 10 to our constitution modifier, giving us 12 hit points at first as our max for first level. So let's go ahead and write that. So hit point maximum 12. And then you'll use this big space while you're playing when you get damaged to, to indicate that. So you want to create a system for keeping track of those sorts of things. So you just might want to, you know, just write it, your current hit point level, you know, do the math in this box. A 12, just so you know, 12 is, is low compared to most characters who are playing Dungeons and Dragons, but pretty high for first level. So just to kind of give you a sense, you can probably survive two hits, give or take, from the, the sorts of creatures that you will be encountering at first level. We're ready to go back to that bit about the skills in the fighter. Remember, we skipped it halfway through, so we're ready to, to go back to that. And you guys remember, was it 24, right? Yeah. Okay, so the skills 
part. So we knew saving throws are strength and constitution, but we also get to choose some skills. And I had us do our ability scores first because the ability score will drive how good we are um, at these individual skills. So for example, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for this character to do a lot of intelligence, to, to be trained in a lot of intelligence-based skills. So even though the training will give you an, an advantage, this minus one will counteract that. So it's kind of good in D&D to make sure that you're good at, at at least a few key things. You don't have to max, min-max everything, but it is good to make sure that you can actually do some real some real key things. We get to pick two skills here, right? The thing about this is that can be a little confusing is when we pick a background, and remember, we're going to pick the soldier background based on this quick build recommendation. That will give us some skills as well. And, you know, I peeked ahead. You know, that's the advantage of me have, of curating this experience for you. And so I know that the, that the soldier will give us intimidation and athletics. I'm not going to mark it now. I'm just kind of telling you why I'm not choosing those now. Um, even though those are real natural for this character, I'm going to choose some different ones because I know you know, later in the process, we will also be granted uh, proficiency in those skills. There honestly are no real optimal choices. So I'm going to go with insight and survival. So you'll see that insight and survival are both on this list and I get to choose two. So now I'm going to go over here. Insight is, is actually wisdom. Okay. And insight is your ability to like read people, essentially, you know, tell when people are lying or tell when they're nervous about something or, or whatever. And then survival. Survival is your ability to kind of, oh, that, they're both wisdom based. I just realized that. Um, that's fine. That's not a problem at all. Yeah. Now I'm wondering, maybe I should have switched my dexterity for that, but no, I'm going to stick to my plan for now. So just noticing you may have come across those things. And if you're in a rush, this is not a big deal. You know, the fact that you're not optimized here is not going to break your character. You know, as a, as a nerd who makes YouTube videos about D and D creation, character creation, I'm already seeing ways to optimize. So you can do that if it's fun, but don't feel like you have to. So we're just going to roll along because, um, you know, we're on a, we're on a clock, right? We've got a, we've got a game though to get ready for and we've got to pick up the kids from school or whatever. So we're going to go on to the next page for now. So we'll, we'll get, we'll come back to this. So don't worry. You'll, you'll have some gear before we're done. The more important thing is to look on this table on page 25. So this table is going to really drive um, the cool stuff that your character can do as you advance in levels. We're making a first level character, so this is all you need to pay attention to right now. You don't need to understand any of this other stuff for now. Um, you will, you know, you can note and then feel free to forget that every few levels your proficiency bonus will go up um, and you'll get some really cool other things. But for now, all we need to care about are fighting style and second wind. So what does that mean? So fighting style is something we get to choose. So here's another place where we can optimize uh, and personalize our character. For this example, I'm still sticking to main principles. So I'm trying, I'm still keeping things simple. We want to make this character really easy to run and easy to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with defense. So anytime that we're wearing armor, we get a plus one to our AC. So we don't know what, what armor we're wearing yet. So I, I don't know what this means exactly, but I'm going to make a note of it. So the first thing is I'm going to write down fighting style. and defense and i'm gonna i'm gonna just go ahead and i like to write down just key things so i remember what that's about so it's ac plus one oops, excuse me ac plus one with armor okay great because there'll be times later on you're like you'll you'll be wondering like why is my armor class this way or your dungeon master may wonder or the players may wonder um and so it's good to have that information just so you can um, find it when, when people are curious about what, what happened. And frankly, it's easy to make mistakes when you're doing character, when you're doing creating characters. And so some on your DM, especially m may suspect that you've made a mistake or, and you know, frankly, you, you know, I, I think we're, we're not going to make a mistake here, mistake here today, but that's a very normal part of the game to screw up your character somehow and have your DM, uh, you know, ask some questions about that and kind of pull that out. So just so you can fix it, not a big deal if that happens. So like I, like you also saw, first level fighters also start with second wind. So I'm going to write that down here also. So for second wind. So for second wind, what is that? Let's, let's look at that again. I don't think we paid any attention here. So, so second wind, we have a limited well of stamina that we can draw on to protect yourself from harm. Mechanically, what that means is on your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level. So it's going to be 1d10, so you'll, you'll roll. Uh, a 10-sided dice, and then you'll add your fighter level, which right now is 1, 
and that's how many um, hit points you'll get. So you can heal yourself. So bonus action to heal 1d10 plus 1. And then I'm going to write the page number because um, so often I just want to look things up or I can't remember. I'll forget that you um, that this goes up when I go up in level. Um, so page 25 of the basic rules. So I highly recommend you do that. So anything that's adjustable, go ahead and just jot the page number down so you can flip right to it if you have a question. So just real quick, I'm not going to go into a lot about the other rules of D&D, but this, this is something that's fairly important. In 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, during combat you can um, take a standard action to make an attack or cast your spells or just do your main thing. Do whatever the main kind of cool thing is. And then you can also move. So you can take a move action. So every character can do those two things. And then you also have a bonus action. And bonus actions can only be used on very specific things. So a lot of times they just go unused. If you don't have um, the sort of ability that lets you use a bonus action or that requires a bonus action, um, it doesn't, you just don't get to do it. And that, and that's fine. That's not a problem. There'll be, you know, many times you won't use a bonus action, but a second wind is used on a bonus action. So you can still attack, you can still move and heal yourself all in the same turn, which is pretty cool. It's also kind of easy to forget. So just, you might want to, uh, you know, make a note here about this bonus action. If this was pen and paper, you know, I would even circle the bonus action or use a highlighter, literally a highlighter, um, so that you remember that, um, so you remember it. So where are we? And so we're on, I know that we're on step four. It's called describing your character. Um, so, you know, you could ignore all this other stuff for now. And it's, you know, there's a lot of kind of good stuff. I'm not saying it's bad at all, but again, we're focused on just trying to get you ready to, to play your character like now. So what we really need to do, absolutely need to do is pick a background. So this, this leads us to chapter four, page 33. So there's a whole, there's a whole chapter there on all these details. So, you know, this, you know, just real quick, there's a height and weight table. You don't have to use this. Again, you don't have to roll to figure out that you, if you would just want to be six foot two and weigh 210 pounds, that's fine. If you do want to roll, that's great too. Not a big deal and not required. Uh, similar with alignment, this explains the nuances of that alignment system. There's a list of languages. Remember, we have that one language. Um, so now is a good time if, if you have some clarity about what language you want. Um, if you don't, that's fine. You may also want to wait and see who the other characters will be um, in your party. So if there's, you know, three dwarves, you just might want to pick dwarvish so, so you can all speak the same language and, um, and confuse the orcs that you fight or, you know, whatever. So again, for now, you can actually skip all this. It, it can be fun. Feel free to look into it. But for now, we don't need any of this stuff. Um, so I'm going to just kind of keep us rolling to the background section. That's because the background is is really critical for creating your character. And so remember, for a fighter, the recommendation for a quick build was to pick soldier. Now, this is another case where it might seem like you're really hamstrung. But right here it says, you know, it really reminds us that being a soldier can mean a lot of different things. So thinking about, say, you know, if you ever watched the MASH from the, the 70s, you know, it was a... It was a a show about you know a medical unit in the Korean War, and you know many of those characters were soldiers, and they were entirely different soldiers. They weren't all like Space Marine kind of soldiers at all. In fact, the main characters weren't 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 that way at all. And even on this list, you know, there's a big difference between a support staff, a cook who is still a soldier, absolutely, and the infantry, you know, the frontline person, or you know, the healer. You know, back to that you know Mash idea. If you wanted to be Hawkeye Pierce, here might be a way to do it. Um, you know, this character is not geared for that, you know, but that's another way that you can apply these things just and make small differences. Okay, so back to what's important. So we've got, um, oh, and, you know, another word, I didn't explain what your background is. It, it kind of speaks for itself, but a background was what your character was busy doing before the game started, before they became an adventurer. So, you know, what was your life like before the call to adventure came to you? I'm going to go ahead and write soldier down. We haven't written anything down for a minute. Great. Um, okay. Soldier. Player name. That's me. Uh, Chad. Great. Don't worry about the rest. If you have a name, go ahead and put that down. And now we'll get back to that bit where it said what our skill proficiencies are. So we get athletics and intimidation. Remember, I'd, I had peeked ahead. So just like we did with insight and survival, we also get to add 
intimidation, which is charisma. So we can kind of scare people into doing what, what we want. And athletics. Athletics is really good. You, you really want to make sure you have that if your if strength is your main ability score. Um, and so athletics is your ability to climb and jump and throw things and just use brute strength to do kind of cool physical activities. Um, it is a little different from acrobatics. So acrobatics is the jumpy parkour kind of stuff. Um, athletics is just is like long jump and high jump and more linear kind of brute force strength. So we also need to jot this stuff down. So um, tool proficiencies, you know, this is not that. I don't know. This, this is kind of cool. It can be cool. Not essential right now. So the equipment, um, you know, you get an insignia of rank. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy all this stuff down. Um, and then we can edit it over on the character sheet just for simplicity's sake. So here at the bottom, equipment and character notes. I mostly use this for, for just the equipment. And then um, I use the back a lot when I'm writing with paper for my character notes. Um, and insignia of rank, great, a trophy. And so here's where you'll need to decide, you know, what, what is your, your trophy? And I, I'm going to do the piece of banner. Taken from a fallen enemy. And then I can just delete all this other stuff here. That's where you have to apply your own creation. If, if that's not interesting to you, none of this matters. You know, you can just throw this stuff in, you know, in this, you know, your character can throw these things in the, in the trash five minutes before the, the adventure starts. This doesn't matter if it isn't, doesn't appeal to you, but it's just a way to kind of get things started when you're thinking about your character. Um, and a set of bone dice or a deck of cards. I'm going to just say um, a deck of cards. And then for proficiency, remember it said... Um, one type of gaming set. So I'm going to, so for proficiencies, we get, I'm going to go ahead and connect those, right? So the deck of cards and vehicles land as far as other proficiencies. So that goes over here. That's right. Cards that may not matter, but if that's fun to you, if you want to be a little bit of a gambler, um, cool, go for it. Um, if you don't, you know, that's fine too. And, uh, oh, vehicles, um, land. So not like airships or anything, but you can like drive a cart <laughs> or maybe a chariot or those sorts of things. So that's cool. You know, that can that can really be helpful. Now we're going to roll real quick for traits, ideals, bonds and flaws. That is all all this stuff. And so you can just you can pick these. These are just ways to flesh out your character a little bit more. So if any of these have resonance for you, um, just write them down. There are no numerical um, mechanical differences. So even if you're following along note for note, um, here's a place where if you tinker with it and do something else, uh, that's fine. It won't affect your character at all. So or it won't it won't affect the combat abilities of your character directly at all. If you behave in accordance with these things in a real notable way, your dungeon master may award you with inspiration. So that's something you should look up. That's a, that can be a kind of a cool thing. Really, inspiration is just you get to roll two d20s and take the best. Uh, of the two. I went ahead and rolled in advance. So the first personality trait, I actually rolled a one. So I'm always polite and respectful. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle that over. And that's this section, this upper right section. So personality traits, always polite, polite and respectful. Great. All right. And then my ideals. So my ideal that I, the thing I really hold the highest is nation. So my nation, uh, my city, my nation or people are all that matter. So if it's a, it could be a city state or whatever makes sense in your campaign. So my ideals are real, a patriot, kind of a Captain America type. Um, cool. And then bonds, I had rolled a three. So my honor is my life. And, you know, even though I did this and it's, it is actually pretty fast. I've seen plenty of characters show up with all this blank, and, and that's fine, too. The, the important thing is that you have, a, you know, a, some sense of what your character's about, you know, so you, so you know what sort of decisions they make. So then for flaw, I had rolled a five. So I, I obey the law, even if the law causes misery. Okay. Great. So again, if none of these, if some of this doesn't sound, found, sound fun to you, change it. <laughs> and you can change it, you know, it won't screw up your attack rolls or anything if you change, if you tinker with any of this. Um, you know, this hangs together pretty well. All right, now we get to go shopping. So let's go back. We're on step five. We'll go back to um, the fighter. We're going to do this the, the easy way. 
page 24, there's, there's two ways you can do it. So there's a way to actually roll for your gold pieces, and we'll see that here shortly. Um, you can roll for your total gold pieces and, and just buy it off of a master equipment list. I'll show you that here in a second. Um, or the efficient way that I think works out value-wise is just to follow this instruction here in the equipment section of your class. So every class has a different instructions here. We get to choose either chain mail or leather armor, a longbow, and 20 arrows. So this character, as you remember, is strength-based. So I want the heavy armor. You know, longbow and arrows and leather armor is not going to be my jam. So I'm going to take the chain mail. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So we're back down to our equipment section. Uh, so chain mail. Okay. And then the next one is a martial weapon and a shield, or two martial weapons. So what is that? What? What's going on? You're probably wondering, what is a martial weapon? That doesn't mean anything. So let's go ahead and um, take a look. So I think it's page 43. Yeah, okay, great. So here are those other rules that I mentioned about if you want to start with just money and buy everything cleanly, you just roll um, and go for it. Um, a lot of nuanced rules. Here's the, the armor list. So we got chain mail. Not the chain shirt, so the chain mail. And the chain mail is, is better. A higher number is better. It doesn't give you a bonus. Your dexterity bonus doesn't apply to this heavier armor, which is fine with me. I don't mind that. This also tells us that we need a minimum of a strength of 13 um, to use this kind of armor. So we've got that, no problem. And it gives us disadvantage on stealth checks. So as you might imagine, clanking around with metal um, chains for armor, it, it makes it harder to be stealthy. So just, just know that. That's not going to be our character strength. Now, but what brought us here was um, our martial weapons. So here's the weapons list on page 46. And uh, we can choose, what was it again? I don't even remember. What was it again? It was, um, oh, wep a martial weapon and a shield or two martial weapons. Here's where, again, it comes into um, what's our concept for the character. You know, we had already picked that we're a defensive fighter. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the shield and and a martial and one martial weapon. I think that's going to give us real survivability. That really sets us up to really go toe to toe with the bad guys and just be that first line of defense for our friends. And uh, now, what martial weapon? You know, you'll see on this list the different damage types. And just so that you understand a little bit about what we're doing, you can forget most of this if you need to. But imagining you'll be this character uh, will be carrying a shield in your in his his or her. Uh, or their left hand, and then have a weapon in the right hand. So we want to make sure that we don't pick a two-handed weapon because that we won't be able to use it because that shield really requires you to use your entire hand. We're, uh, let's eliminate all these two-handed. You see a lot of these, are they do more damage, right? These two-handed weapons. Versatile is okay. A versatile weapon tells us um, that you can use it with two hands to use this bigger dice for damage, um, or in one hand to use the, the main one. And so this... So we see um, versatile is fine too. Now, again, we're trying to do this the quick and easy way. So I, we can just literally pick the first weapon uh, on the list, the battle axe. And that's a really good option. So it's 1d8 slashing, cool. It's versatile, so if I drop that shield and just use the axe, I can do a little bit more damage. Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that, write that down. So, so shield, right, we decided on that. And then battle axe, okay. And so just as a forecast, I'm going to go ahead and write battle axe one hand here, and then battle axe two hand here. And remember what it said. So it was, uh, we haven't done attack bonus yet, but the damage type um, is this. So the damage and type, 1d8 piercing. Slashing. Sorry, I sorry, got confused. 1d8 slashing. So 1d8 slashing. And then remember the two-handed, because it's versatile, was 1d10 also slashing. Okay. And so this matters because some enemies are um, resistant to certain types of attack, of types of damage. So slashing damage um, is, is a certain thing. It's, it won't matter a whole lot, but you, that's, that can be important for some, for some battles. Cool. We also get a light crossbow or two, and some bolts, or two hand axes. So, you know, for this character, I think I'm going to pick those hand axes because the hand axes are up here. 
Yeah, so they're thrown weapons. And so a thrown weapon, you use your strength score because um, it's like you're hurling it at the enemy um, to hit it and to do damage. And a crossbow wouldn't allow us to do that. Um, hand axes it is. One thing about hand axes, this tells us the range, and you'll see this 2060 here, you see this here, is a little bit lower than some of these other scores. So it's about the same as a dagger, a lot less than javelin, um, about the same as a spear. So that's not awful. But these are like true ranged weapons, you'll see all this means is we don't have a lot of range. So we're mostly an up-close character anyway, an up-close fighting character anyway. But if we can't quite get to the bad guy, this gives us an option. And it's light. So um, another thing to just to keep in the back of your mind, again, we're not going to be doing this much, but just, you know, just maybe something that might be fun for you is you can actually dual wield this hand axe. So you can, instead of carrying a shield, you could have the hand axe in that hand. And because it's light, you could attack with both both of your axes. And that could be fun, but that's not going to be our main thing. We're going to have our shield in that hand uh, for the most part. And when we don't have the shield, it's going to be because we're using our battle axe to get more damage. So that's that's what this character is designed to do. So let's write that down. So we have uh, hand axes. So we have two hand axes. And we also want to write, again, in this attacks table, um, our hand axe. And then what was that? 1d6, right? 1d6 slashing? I'll double check, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Groovy. So we're doing great. Yeah. So all of that stuff, we still have some cleanup to do once everything is set and figured out. So, so um, just so you know. So the last decision, because I want to finish this first, is Dungeoneer's Pack or Explorer's Pack. You know, you're probably like, what even is this? And if you don't know, just just do the minimum you can do. You can just write Dungeoneer's Pack. That's a little bit better than the other one. So you can just literally write Dungeoneer's Pack. You know, why is that? You're probably wondering. Like, what am, what are we? What have I done? Um, and it is good to know the difference and why we did that. So let's let's go over that. So here it's on page 49. You'll see the different equipment packs that were granted. So you'll see the Dungeoneer's pack, which you can buy if you were using the other method uh, for gear uh, at 12 gold, and the Explorer's pack, which you can buy for 10 gold. So already that gives you a sense the Dungeoneer's pack is a better deal. And and so here are all the things that come in come in the Dungeoneers pack. So that's you know it's pretty cool. So it gives your you know everybody gets a backpack just about. Um, but a crowbar, a hammer, uh, ten pitons, some torches, you know all that kind of stuff you need to adventure. The Explorers pack has a lot of that stuff as well. Both are both are fine, but this is a little bit better. Um, I actually recommend that you write all of this stuff, all of these different things, and put it on your character sheet because. You know, the words Dungeoneer's Pack doesn't tell you really anything in itself. You know, if you're in this critical moment and you're trying to solve a problem that the, your Dungeon Master has presented to you, that doesn't tell you anything. But this list will say, like, okay, this door that keeps, you know, being closed, you know, oh, I've got a hammer and a piton, so I can use that to keep the door to, to hammer the piton into the ground, and that'll block the door from closing behind us. Great. You know, that's it. So that's that's the main thing. We're going to do we have to do some cleanup yet. So don't don't rush off just just yet. You're not quite ready. That was the last step. Um, you know, I know we didn't really follow this step. We did follow the step list, but just not super closely. But, you know, really, I wanted to make sure that you were focusing on the right things at the right time. So now is the cleanup phase. And this this is also super important. So don't don't skip this. So let's just start at the top. If you have a character name, you know, that can wait. Also, your proficiency bonus. You remember what that was? So that's a plus two. That came off of the table um, in the fighter section. Do you remember? Um, you remember that? I think that was on page 24. It was indeed on page 20, uh, 25 at the bottom. Your proficiency bonus is plus two. So we wrote that. Great. Um, we don't have any inspiration. Um, armor class. So now we can write, we can figure out what our armor class is. And so our armor class is made up of three, has three different factors. We've got our chain mail and then the shield, and then our fighting style. So those are the three numbers that are going to tell us what our armor class is. So let's go ahead back. So it's page 44. Our chain mail is 16, gives us an armor class of 16. The shield is plus two. And then, so that's at 18, right? And then we get plus one to, because of our fighter ability. So that's 19 armor class. So that's real good. And and another little hint that I like to do is I will jot those things down in pencil right up here. And I, in fact, I think I'm going to do that for this character. Chainmail 16. Shield um, plus 2. 
Um, cause 19 is pretty high and you'll want to know that's, we, we made some choices with our character that really made that higher. Um, and then protection fighting style plus one. Okay, great. And, uh, so initiative, so your initiative, this is the dice. This is the modifier you'll roll and or you'll add to your dice, um, to determine the, the order during combat. So your initiative is your dexterity modifier. So that's a plus one as well. Some characters have um, other things that they get to add to this, but um, we don't. <laughs> we we have not created that character, so we just get a plus one. So nothing wrong with that. So we did current hit points. Temporary hit points are things that may come up later on, but not, not for us initially. So let's talk about attack bonus. So this is an important box. So let's Let's talk about all our weapons. We want to make sure that we are ready to go because this is key information when you're going to play. So your attack bonus is um, because this is a weapon that we are proficient at. You know, so we're, when I say that, it's a martial weapon, which our fighter class told us we're proficient at. So we get to add our proficiency bonus plus our strength modifier. So we get to add our strength modifier to any of those weapons that didn't say finesse or, or ranged. So this is range, but it's also thrown. So most ranged weapons and finesse weapons use dexterity. The others use strength. So that tells us that we get a plus five to attack with our hand axe. And that's the same whether it's two-handed or one-handed. So that's pretty cool, right? So then we also get to add our strength modifier to the, da to the damage. This is, um, oh, and it's the hand axe, same thing, plus five. So to the damage, we don't get to add our proficiency bonus to our damage. We only get to add this plus three. We don't get to add the plus two. So that, that's easy to get confused. And I, to this day, I've been playing this game literally since the day it was published. Um, and I still forget. And I just made a mistake. So it's plus three. Actually, it should be um, plus three. Get that in there. Okay. So 1d8 plus three is going to be our normal. And then if we drop that shield, it'll be 1d10 plus three. And then same deal here. Plus three. And there's, you know, there was another fighting style we could have chose, which would have also increased this, but we didn't. We chose, we, we chose the defensive fighting style. So just so you know, there's other things that can modify pretty much all these numbers. So this, this is your main, you know, going to be a very common reference in combat, especially for this character as the fighter. You need to know what your armor class is, um, and you need to know what your modifier and your attack thing is, your basic one. This first one is you're going to use the most. And then if you're throwing your hand axe, this is what you'll use. You might want to use some highlighter or something there. And this, you know, this is pretty much the minimum that you um, need to have ready to go to play. Now, I like to take it another step further and to apply um, all these numbers here. So let's, let's spend another minute, maybe five minutes, filling out these numbers. So remember, all these dots told us that we are proficient at this. So we are proficient with our strength saving throw, for example. So that means we get to add our proficiency bonus plus the modifier. So anything with a dot, we get to add these, these both numbers together. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that in uh, real quick. And I recommend you do too. Like there's a lot, you know, frankly, when you're playing the game, there's a lot going on. And so it's nice to have those numbers just right there in front of you. So you notice there are no dots here. Um, so all these are just plus one for um and i'm looking at the dexterity so dexterity is all all these skills saving throws all that is just just plus one so that's fine constitution you know because we're fighters we got trained in that so we get to add um the proficiency plus the modifier so that's plus four so intelligence now we're at a minus one for all these um don't be surprised when a bad wizard tries to take over your brain and you have to roll your saving throw to resist it and you suck and you get possessed and bad things happen. That's just, that's just how that is. Why did I write a minus one at insight? I think that was a mistake. Because your insight was trained. So most of these will be zero, but actually we get to add our profic proficiency. Uh, your insight is actually a plus two. So I bet I had the cursor in the wrong place. So your insight and your survival are plus two and all the rest are just zero. So, you know, again, just real quick, I'll write zeros in there just to be a completionist. And then real quick, plus two to our untrained skills in charisma. And then plus four for intimidation. And I hope you know why. So we are adding our charisma modifier of plus two, plus our proficiency bonus of plus two for, to intimidation for a plus four. And then last but not least, our passive perception, passive, you know, it says wisdom, but it's, it's both. Passive perception is the skill, wisdom is the ability. So really, 
what that is, so first mechanically, that's 10 plus your wisdom modifier, your perception, wisdom perception modifier, wisdom perception modifier zero. So that's just 10. And your passive perception is just your general awareness. How just generally attentive is your character when they're not specifically searching for something or looking for a specific thing? You know, if you're just walking through the forest, how perceptive are you? So very average <laughs> is where we are. Nothing wrong with that. So we are done. So if you used a fillable form like this, let's fill in a name. We're going to name him Carcassonne of Vonenfeld. So that's it. Your character's ready to go. To get the most out of the game, I recommend that you read through some of the content that I told you to skip. You don't have to, but the more you read, the better off you'll be. Spend some time with what you find interesting. You'll also want to spend some time thinking about the future for your character. So what? how is your character going to grow? How are they going to get better? What are they going to become? What are they striving towards? Those things will change, but it's kind of fun to just have an idea on that. If you're ready to spend some money on this game, uh, start with the player's handbook. You can get those on Amazon for pretty cheap or go to your you know, not super cheap. I mean, it's a hardback. Um, it's a hardback book. So like maybe 30 bucks might be up to 50 um, in some cases at your at your at your hobby store. But that's where you're going to want to start. So for this character, you know, we talked about dice. So this is important, too. You're going to need probably I recommend two 20 sided dice. So you're going to roll 20 sided dice a lot. So it just in D&D, that's your key thing. So if you have advantage, you get to roll two of them and take the better. If, if you have disadvantage because I don't know, you're in a bad position for some reason, you roll two and just take the lower. You're going to also want to have probably two eight sided dice. Sometimes you'll get to roll both of those for your damage. Mostly you'll just roll one. But if you if you hit it, if you do a critical, you get to roll two. Same with your axes, your other your um your hand axes and your battle axe two handed. So you're gonna want a two d10s, two d6s, and a d8. You'll also roll a d10 for that um for your second wind. So if you don't want to buy a bunch of dice, you know, and you just borrow, just know what to ask for from your gamer friends who probably are going to have a whole bundle of dice uh, like many of us do. I know, um, you know, when I was preparing for this video, Adam Hancock has prepared some some things from that's posted on the DMs Guild that looked really useful. Now, I, I just glanced at it just to tell that it looked like pretty legit, and it, it really definitely does. Um, but I haven't used it, and I, I, you know, I can't speak for its veracity, but it, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to put a, uh, a link to that in the notes as well. So... So if you have any other questions or recommendations for future videos, if you want more like this, you know, I could do kind of the next level up. So if you want to play a caster, we can do the simple version of that, or we can do just fighters or, or no more of this. That's fine too. So let me know in the uh, comment section. And uh, as always, like and subscribe to the video. Uh, until next week, happy gaming.